here is an SQL challenge to all of you. This is a real SQL interview problem. In the first couple of minutes, I'm going to explain you the problem statement and the approach that I'm going to take to solve this SQL problem. What you can do is you can pause the video at that time and then go to my blog, download all the data sets, create the tables in your database and then try to solve the problem yourself. Once you solve it, let me know in the comments below if you use the same solution that I used in this video or let's say if you used a different solution, then share with me your solution in the comments below. And let's say you were not able to solve it, then let me know what was the problem that you faced, at what step did you get stuck and the reason or what did you find the most hardest in solving this problem. Okay, now let's start. Now this problem was shared to me by Ashish Kamle. He faced this problem during one of his recent interviews. Okay, now this is the problem statement as you can see. Basically, you are given two tables. There is a position table and there is an employee table. Okay, using these two tables, you need to come up with an output that looks something like this. Okay, now let us better understand this by understanding what exactly these two tables have. Okay, so the first one is a position table. It has information about the different job vacancies available. Okay, so you can see that there are job vacancies available for three different titles okay or designations so there is one vacancy for the general manager there is five different vacancies available for the post of a manager and then there are 10 different vacancies available for the post of assistant manager okay there are some additional information here like which group each of this uh, designation or title belongs to what is the level of each designation here the pay scale etc okay and then for each of this position there is an id that is mentioned here okay so this is basically what the position table has then we have the second table that is the employee table this basically tells us the employees that have filled these vacancies already okay so you can see that for this general manager position the id is one and here we have this position id field so basically john smith has already occupied this position of general manager so there was only one vacancy available and that vacancy is already filled by john smith okay that is what is present in the employee table when it comes to the second title that is manager there are five vacancies available but only three of the employees they have already found okay so out of five open positions three positions are already taken by these three employees Jane Doe, Michael Brown and Emily Johnson okay that means there are two more uh, vacancies available for the position of manager okay when it comes to assistant manager there were 10 vacancies available but as per the employee table six of them are already taken by these six employees that is mentioned here how do I understand that by using this position id field because this is a position id 3 and the position id 3 belongs to assistant manager Okay, so this is what these two tables are having. Now, let's look at the output that we need to come up with. Okay, so this is the output we need. What basically they want us to display is here in the position table, we have entry for each different positions, right? And each position, how many vacancies are available are present in the total post. Okay, but in the output, they basically have an entry for each different post, okay, or each different vacancies. So, here we have three records, but when it comes to the output, I can see that there are 16 records. Okay, so if I count the total number of vacancies, it is 1 plus 5 plus 10 that is equal to 16, right? So for each vacancy, there is one record. Okay, and in each of this record, there is information about the vacancies as well as the employee who has filled it. Okay, so the vacancy name, there is a title, the group, the level, the pay scale, and then the employee who filled up that vacancy. Okay, so we know for manager, three of the positions were already taken by these three employees. Hence, the three uh, records here are basically having information about the employee. Okay, the last two vacancies are, are still vacant. Basically, the last two positions are still vacant. So that is why it's mentioned as vacant. Now, similarly, if I come to the last position of assistant manager, I can see that the six employees have already taken the first six vacant positions, but there are four more positions that are still vacant okay and that is exactly what we need to display in our output okay i hope you understand what is required okay now you if you want you can pause the video and you can try to solve it yourself okay but if you want to continue watching definitely continue watching what i'm going to do is i'm going to create these two tables in my postgresql in fact i have already done that and now let's start solving this problem okay so now first let's look at the job positions table you can see that these are the three 
uh, job positions available and then I have the employees table with these 10 employees who have already filled the vacancies okay now the very first thing that I need to do is if I look at my input here there are three records for job position and in the employees table there are 10 records right but in my output I need 16 records one record for each vacancy right so how do I come up with those number of records that's the first thing that comes to my mind okay now if I look at the job positions table here I have this field total post right this basically tells the total number of vacancies so basically the sum of this that is 1 plus 5 plus 10 is 16 that is the total number of records I need in my output right so can I think of a solution such that using the values in this field I can derive the number of records based on the values that is present here right so what is that one logic that I can use okay now a couple of things that comes to my mind one is I can use recursive SQL to basically do this okay but there is a more easier way to do this okay and that is by using an inbuilt function called as generate series okay now generate series is available in PostgreSQL also in SQL server the latest version of SQL server I think 2022 but in other databases if you are using you might have to check if it is available or not okay now let me just tell you what exactly generate series does for example if I just write generate series and let's say 1 to 10 okay and if I just run this you can basically see that it generates me 10 different records what basically this means is this is the name of the function this first argument here is basically your starting point that is how it starts at number 1 and then this is until which number it should go right 1 to 10 okay so this is the starting point this is the end point okay and then I can also give an optional third argument telling how many numbers should it skip okay I will not use it for now by default it is 1 okay so let's say instead of 1 and 10 let's say if I put 5 then the generate series is going to start from 5 and go until 10 okay so and for each of these values it's going to create one new record okay so probably we can use this function to derive the total number of records okay so what I need to do is I will use the generate series function to generate the number of records but how many records should it generate I will basically derive that using the total post field in my job positions table right so this means I will need to join the job positions table with this generate series function right so let's try to do that okay so I'm just going to copy this table here and then just going to put it here and let's say I'll just do select star from job positions I'll give an alias like P and I need to join okay now how do I join generate series with job positions I do not have basically any common field with which I can do a join right whenever I have this kind of a requirement one join that I can probably use is cross join okay because when I'm using cross join I don't need to provide a join condition right so I'll try to do that okay so I'll say cross join and I'll use this whole thing okay generate series okay but the thing is I know my generate series need to start from one but the end position will be defined based on the total post right so I'll just mention the total post okay that is probably p dot uh, total post okay so this p dot total post I'm basically taking it from the job positions table from above okay and I think that's all and here I'm just going to say p dot star it will fetch all the fields from the p table that is a position table and this one is going to generate a column generate series okay so I'll just run this and see if it works okay and you can see that it already works I'm getting 16 records okay if I just move this a little to the top you can see that I am getting the 16 records that I wanted okay and if you see for general manager there is one vacancy so there is one record when I come to manager you can see that there are five records because there were five vacancies because generate series generated five records for that okay so how this worked was initially job position the first record was general manager the total post value was one so this value would be one so it is generate series one comma one it will generate just one record and that was this particular record okay when SQL goes to the second record that is from the second record from the job position table in the job position table the second record belongs to the manager tape manager record and its total post was five right so this will become five right so one comma five will generate five records okay and that is why it's generating five records okay and each of these five records will have the same value from all the P table that is job position table only change will be in the generate series that is one to five okay and the same thing happens for the assistant manager record okay now I hope this is clear okay so we have got our 16 records the next thing that we need to do is we just need to join all of this with our employee table properly 
and derive all the fields that we need, right? Or fetch all the columns that we need. Now the question is, how do I join this whole query with the employee table? Are there any common columns with which I can join? Let's see, okay? Now here I can see that I have this position ID. I think I should have, right? Yeah, this is the position ID, right? This ID from the P table, that is position table. And if I go into my employee table, I can see that I have this position ID. So I can join using the position ID, okay? But just if I join using the position ID, I'm going to get a lot of duplicate record. Why? You can see that the position ID here is repeated. Two is repeated three times, right? And if I look at this query here, two is repeated like what, five times. So five into three, I'm going to get 15 records. There'll be duplicate data. So that means I need to join using the position ID, but additionally, I also need to join using something else. Okay, and what is that something else? Okay, so you can see that the only other field that I can use for joining is probably this generate series. Okay, so for each of this position, the generate series is kind of like is, is basically starting from first, right? So for general manager, generate series is just one. When it comes to the manager record, you can see that the generate series, or let's say if I just remove this, and if I just show you these five records for the manager uh, position, the generate series is like reset from one to five, okay? Similarly for assistant manager, the generate series is reset from one to 10, okay? So can I think of a way such that in the employee table for each of that record based on the position ID, I can have a value reset from one, okay, and count go until the number of records, right? So I'm not sure if I confused you, but let me just show you what I'm trying to explain, okay? So in my employee table, I have, let's say, 10 records, right? And you can see that this is the one record for position ID one, then I have three records for the second position, and then I have six records for the third position, right? Can I come up with a number such that I'll have one, two, three, okay, for these three positions. And then again, I have one, two, three, four, until six for these positions. So that I can use these IDs that I will generate now to join with the generate series that I have in this subquery, right, or in this query, right? How do I generate that unique row number? And that is by using a window function called as row number, right? So I can just write row number and I put over here and I say partition because I need to regenerate the number based on each position, right? So I'll say partition by position ID and I'll say order by ID, okay? And I'm going to call it like RN, okay? And if I run this, now you can see that in my employee table, I have the 10 records, I have the different positions and for each of the positions, I have a unique row number, okay? So now I can use this row number to join with the generate series, okay? Why? You can see that in the generate series, I have for each position, this generate series is like having this kind of like row number values, right? So this one will match with the first employee, two will match with the second employee, three will match with the third employee, and the last two will not have any employees. So we will pay, uh, mention it like vacant, okay? And that is exactly what we want in our output, right? So let's try to do that, okay? So this is my query that I have written. Here I need to join my employee table. So I'll just copy this whole employee table, okay? And let's say I'll just move this to down. And here I'm just going to say, join okay with the employee table okay but there is one more thing that i need to consider here okay so if i just move this to the right now if i do a join this query here only returns me 10 records because there are only 10 employees but this above query here returns me 16 records if i do an inner join i'm going to lose some of the data right rather what i want to do is i'm going to do a left join so all the data from the above query or the result set is returned in my output okay so that is what i'll do and I think that's all. And now I need to provide my join condition. And my join condition is basically, so here I'll give an alias like E. And my join condition, initially I told, in the E table, I have a field called as position ID, right? So I'll say position ID is equal to, from the P table, I have the ID, right? If you remember, in the position table, I have the ID. And in the job employees table, I have the position ID. So I'm joining that too, okay? Additionally, I told I also need to join using the row number that I generated here with the generate series, right? So I'll put that, okay? So I'll just tell uh, that T is, maybe I'll move it to the next line. And I'll just tell E dot RN equal to, that is this generate series, right? So I'll just mention that, okay? And I will run it. Now I'm getting still 16 records, so that looks fine, but the the column that I'm displaying is not exactly what I want, okay? So based on what I want in my output, I'll just mention the fields here. So I'll just tell p.title, then it is p. I think 
groups and levels. So I'll say groups and then p dot levels and then it is pay scale. Okay, p dot pay scale. And then finally, I think it is the employee name. Okay, so I don't need generate series here, but I'll say e dot name. Okay, as employee name. Okay, and if I run this, if I just run this, now you can see that I'm basically getting the exact output that I want, except for one change. Okay, so you can see that here I'm having null, but instead of null, I basically want it to display it as vacant, right? So I'll just put a callies function here. So callies such that whenever the name is null, it's going to display like vacant. Okay, so I'll just run this. And now you can see that I have vacant displayed here. Okay, now if I compare this output with what I exactly wanted, it will exactly match. Okay, so for general manager, there is one vacancy. It is occupied by John Smith. For manager, there are five vacancies. That is these five. The first three are taken by the three employees that is present in the employee table. The last two are vacant and that is what I'm displaying here. Okay, same way for assistant manager, the last four are vacant. Okay, so I hope you found uh, this problem interesting and you understood the solution. Now there's another solution that I can give using recursive SQL. I'll not solve it here, but I will give it in my blog. You can download it and you can check it. Okay. Now, as I said, take this SQL problem as a challenge, try to solve it, compare your solution with my solution. If it is different, share your solution. If you're not able to solve it, let me know what was the problem that you faced. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like this kind of videos, let me know in the comments below so that I can make more such videos. Thank you so much for watching and see you soon in the next one. Bye.